Hello everyone and welcome to another video in Walrus Code. Today I'm going to share my experience doing the IWS CSOPS Administrator certification. As you know, this is one of the associate level certification and it is said to be the most difficult one, which I don't agree, but I am going to explain this, my experience and much more in this video. So if you are interested in this kind of topics, stay tuned till, until the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, smash the like button if you want to support this channel. So first, which is my background? I am a full stack developer now with a focus in backend and AWS cloud computing. And I have already, I've held uh, before of this certification, another certification, the developer associate certification, which I did last year. And then I decided to prepare to this one. And what else? I do have two years of experience, more or less, with AWS doing either uh, real projects uh, in real in the real industry, I mean, and also some personal projects, which you can see also in my GitHub. But yes, that is my background, more or less, uh, in short words. And the next point of this: how was how difficult was this certification? I mean. Everyone says, oh, this is of the administrator is so difficult and stuff, but I don't think it's so difficult. Uh, I scored 848 points and I think that is totally achievable. And I'm going to explain you why. Now let's talk about the exam itself. Why people say it is the most difficult one. My theory is it's not a matter of difficulty, but a matter of how much content you have to study for this one. And I felt like I had to study twice the content I studied when I did the developer associate exam. But from the in perspective of difficulty, I think it's not harder than the other one. But yes, you have to learn a lot of concepts, a lot of, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of services you have to know then their ins and outs, how to configure stuff. But there is a hard focus, a strong focus, I mean, in troubleshooting. So you have to be very well prepared to answer questions so how to troubleshoot an instance if it is not responding or health checks for example if you have an architecture with a load balancer and some instances and the health checks are failing what could be wrong and where could you look at to find this the reason of these timeouts or something you know so prepare your troubleshooting skills prepare for that and yes, there is a lot of content to cover and how can you put all this knowledge in your head without forgetting it? Because that was my issue. I felt like the more I learned, I started to, the more, to, the more I forgot the initial content I was start, uh, learning at the beginning. So for example, at the end of the studies, uh, I mean, if I had already studied for two months for this certification, I had the feeling that I was already forgetting the stuff I learned at the beginning and so on. How do we tackle this problem? And for that, I learned a game changer tip I'm gonna share with you right now. What was game, a game changer for me was start using flashcards. Yes, use flashcards. They are a very good way to enable the skill of space. How do you say that? You can learn in a spaced manner and it is proved like biologically, our brain learns a stuff, saves the stuff in the in the memory when you repeat stuff, repeated stay a space. I think there's a name for this technique and I think I'm gonna write it here, but you can use the technique at your advantage and use it with flashcards. I also use flashcards uh, not only to memorize stuff, but also to take notes. If I were watching a video about CloudWatch, the first thing I'm gonna ask myself is, what is CloudWatch? Then I write that uh, in a flashcard and then I answer it in the other side. It's much less probable that I'm gonna forget what was CloudWatch because I already answered it myself in a flashcard. And not only that, so one step is taking notes and writing down, which also helps to retain uh, knowledge in your kid, but then you can review flashcards every day. And that is the thing that was so helpful for me, reviewing flashcards in a daily basis and not necessarily every flashcard, because you know, at the end of this course of the study for the CISOP administrator, I ended up with 
900 flashcard stone among the course, uh, the entire course. And I didn't check the 900 flashcards in a daily basis, but I did check more or less 30 flashcards in a daily basis every day and shuffled. You have, you can shuffle them. So you never, um, you're never going to guess which topic are you going to be asked in the next flashcard. And that is better because then you can really train yourself like, okay, I'm prepared to answer every question related to CSOPs administrator. I think also, as you know, in this certification, you also have to do in the test exam, some labs, some real labs with a real console in AWS, the account is going to be provided to you. You don't have to have your own account in AWS, by, but I 100% recommend you to get uh, your own account to test just to study, to put into practice everything you're learning during the study to get prepared to the certification. Do it. And there's, there's also a free tire if you don't have money. There's a free tire that covers most of the things you need to learn and to the finally pass the exam. Exactly. Uh, I also recommend, no, okay, let's jump into the point of which were my study sources first. So I studied uh, mostly with this Udemy course of Stefan Marek. He's a very well-known instructor in the AWS ecosystem. He has many certifications. So I went for one of his course for the SysOps administrator, as, uh, blah, administrator, as I already took one of his courses for the developer associate and I thought it was a very high quality course and very condensed and compressed. So I also decided to study with his course for the SysOps administrator. I must say the, his courses are very focused and uh, how do you say it? they are very concise. I mean, they describe just what you need to pass the exam. And that's fine if you are short in time, but if you want to go very deep in the knowledge and really learn the skills, then there's a, there are other courses I can recommend you. For example, the courses from, from Learn, Account, uh, Learn Country, I think it's spelled, but I'm, I'm gonna link those courses in the description, but there's this other stru instructor called Adri Adrian Country, I mean, which has very, very deep and um, focused on skill learning courses in AWS, which you can also take to pass this exam. But yeah, for me, it was enough to do the Stefan Marek courses because I also had already a background in AWS. So I didn't need to go that deep because I have already done that with my own experience and playing with the console and doing my own projects. But yes, that is, uh, there are two instructors you can you can choose to prepare yourself. Adrian Kentrill and Stefan Marek, both of them are very top quality, top quality. So what else? I did a lot of test exams. I mean, before doing the real exam, I did some practice exams and I bought them in Tutorial Dojo. As you know, this is a portal where you can get mock exams and practice exams. And also you can test, uh, there are some lab experiences that are very similar to the experience you're gonna get in the real exam. So I 100% recommend also buying the test exams for the CISOP administrator you're gonna find in Tutorials Dojo, but uh, pay attention, uh, they are from John Bonsos. These are the John Bonsos exams, which you're gonna, maybe you have heard of them. I totally recommend that too. And do some practice. I mean, get your own AWS account do everything you learn, you can put it uh, into practice. For example, if you are doing the Stefan Marek course, he has a lot of hand -on, uh, hands on labs where you can follow with him and do repeat the same steps he does. So you can get your hands dirty with experience in the console. Uh, so those were my sources. How did I prepare for this? How long did I study it? First, I bought the course of Stefan Marek and started to, uh, studying it at the end of February of this year. And I finally scheduled the exam to do it. I did it in the middle of May. So roughly I prepared for two and a half months. That was enough for me. There's people that just prepare two weeks. There's people that just prepare one month. And there are others that take longer, four, six, or uh, even more months. That's up to you. And it is up to you because I don't know how much free time do you have, but I myself, I took two and a half months studying every day, more or less 
one hour in how do you say on average i studied one hour each day maybe even uh, sometimes more sometimes less but it is up to you so that is how long did i prepare and you have to be consistent i mean it's okay if you don't have the time to study every day but at least you do have the time uh, every two one or two or three times per week to study and focus on the exam because this is a thing of time also you have to allow your brain to absorb the knowledge in a how do you say repeatedly schedule otherwise you're gonna learn but then you're gonna forget very fast what you have learned you have to learn and practice and put into practice and build a discipline a habit you have to build a study habit and this is what it's gonna finally make your all your knowledge to get into your brain and stay there and don't in order to the knowledge to remain in you finally how was my experience doing the exam because you know now with the COVID and all this that stuff it is possible to attend the exam remotely in your home that is called the proctorate exam i think but in this occasion i have read so many bad experiences doing the remote labs of the of this CISOP administrators as you know there's a section where you have to interact with the console and i have heard that people had trouble doing that during the online version of the exam so i attended a test center that was in my city which was very close to me and i 100 recommend doing that if you have the chance if there is a test center in your city or close maybe not even in your city but if you had to take the train and travel one hour do it it is worth believe me because you don't have this pressure i i mean I do have the experience of doing a proctorate exam. When I did the developer exam, I did the online version with per person view, just uh, with the person view examiners, or how do you say, whatever. And okay, it was fine, it worked, but I couldn't stand up of my chair for two and a half hour. I couldn't drink water even. I couldn't go to the bathroom. It's like, you have to sit there and you cannot also get too close to the window because they're gonna think you are cheating. Every suspicious activity you do during during the proctorate exam is gonna be taken as a suspicious activity and that sucks because you feel so much under pressure. Not only that, all, also remember you have to do the exam, answer the questions, so you have like double pressure and you can avoid that if you go to the test center because it's so much more relaxed you are gonna be observed as well, but you may go to the bathroom, you may take water and stuff. So please do the test center, I recommend it. And that is pretty much, I think I covered all the topics I wanted to share with you. If you have any more questions regarding to this or other exams in AWS, write them down. Just as, uh, don't forget to hit this, the like button if you found these uh, advices useful. Subscribe to this channel. If you are interested in another topic uh, you would like to hear about of my experience or anything about re uh, related to AWS, write them down also in the commentaries. So that's it. I upload every uh, I try to upload, uh, upload videos like this every week. So we see us next week.